Hello and welcome back to Don Chorus Writes, a miraculous ladybug fan fiction and audio fiction. And this is a new series for Fusion November called A Game of Cat and Mouse. And another shout out to Kim for the use of her gorgeous artwork in the thumbnail. And all her links are below. And I hope you enjoy it. Part two. Make sure you smash the like button, comment down below, and subscribe if you haven't already. And enjoy. Part 2. Marinette's POV Ladybug did her usual zigzag across the city so that no one saw her directly head back home. She skillfully landed through the, her open window and transformed back to Marinette on her bed. Without saying a word, her Kwame Tiki flew off to her jar of cookies and seemed like she was in some sort of huff with her. Marinette sighed. She understood where her friend was coming from and would have a word with her later, after Kat had paid her a quick visit. She grabbed her oversized knitted sweater and shoved it on over her head before stepping out into the cool November day, as the sun began to set already in the late afternoon. She watched the figure of Cat Noir jumping across the rooftops against the pink and purples in the sky. He landed gracefully in front of her, still wearing the wide grin on his face. A cheeky thought ran across her mind and decided to play along with whatever this tomcat had in mind. Good evening, kitty cat. What brings you here? Hello, Minnie. He gave her a sly wink before settling himself down beside her and lowered his voice. I wanted to say that you were amazing out there today. His tone had shifted, reflecting a more earnest feeling towards his words. I think some people think it's easy, being a superhero, turning up and saving the day from Hawk Moth, or is it Shadow Moth anyway, and his Akuma, well it's not. Sometimes it can be quite scary, but today, I really enjoyed it, so thank you. He gazed down at her and there was a tenderness in his expression she had never seen on his face before, feeling herself blush. She looked away and took a steady breath. That's nice of you to say, Kitty. I enjoyed myself being multi-mouse, or should I say mini, for a few hours. Well, if you mean that, he spun round and faced her, his eyes sparkling with excitement. How do you fancy coming on patrol with me tomorrow after school? Shall we say around four? That way you can practice being multi-mouse without the added stress of being in battle first. Just the two of us. I mean, Ladybug won't be there. She fiddled with the threads on her cuffs and glanced back at him through her eyelashes. Again, the blush formed on his cheeks as he rubbed the back of his neck, a gesture she found adorable on someone else. No, Ladybug is probably busy, and I thought it would be fun. A game of cat and mouse, shall we say? I mean, it should be okay. I don't think I've made any plans. Can I ask, as a regular super, how do you find making excuses to leave all the time to go and fight? Do you feel bad lying to them? Yes. Sometimes it can feel awkward, and yes, there are some people I hate lying to. He had leaned in a little closer, and then, as if realising, pulled himself back and sighed. But... You have to keep your identity a secret for you and your loved ones to keep them safe. I get that. I can see how hard it is for you. She placed a hand on his shoulder for support, not thinking he would place his hand on top of hers, locking her touch in. Kitty, would you like to come in and have a hot chocolate? I'm sure there are some cookies about. He gave her a warm smile his fingers interweaving around hers a little as he glanced at the welcoming lit room. I won't come in. I mean, what would people say if you started letting in stray cats into your home? He let out a light-hearted laugh and wiggled his eyebrows at her, knowing her cheeks had turned a little pink. But if you're not too cold, Minnie, I would love one out here with you. She slid her hands out of his. I will be back in a moment, Kitty. Don't go anywhere? I won't. I poor promise. He held his hand up in the air, giving her another Cheshire cat grin. Marinette quickly dashed down the stairs and into her kitchen, warmed up some milk. 
She grabbed two of the hot chocolate sticks she had made to give out as early Christmas presents, placed a handful of marshmallows into a bowl and a can of whipped cream, placing them all onto a tray to take back up. It was kind of nice to be hanging out with her kitty without the pressure of being Ladybug. She poured the hot milk into the waiting large mugs and carried the tray back upstairs. Here, let me help. He jumped down and lifted the tray out of her hands through the skylight and placed it on the small coffee table. Well, Minnie, you didn't have to go through so much trouble for me. The sun had finally set over the city and gave way to the night sky filled with the warm glow of the street lamps and the chill from a clear night. Of course I do. I mean, it's my way of saying thank you to for today. Being so welcoming. How do you take it? What's that? A hot chocolate stick. I made them. It's a blend of cocoa powder and real chocolate on a stick and you dunk them into the hot milk and watch it dissolve. That's so clever, Minnie. That's so you, he breathed the last words. I will take mine with extra marshmallows and cream, please. Got a bit of a sweet tooth, have we? She gave him a cheeky smile. He blushed again. Recently, I've developed one. He watched as she assembled the hot chocolate, taking care of every detail. Can I ask, Kitty? Yes. Cat replied while sneaking a marshmallow out the bowl. Why take me on patrol if you have polymouse now? They caught each other's gaze. Hers was questioning whilst his was deflecting. Yes, sometimes we use polymouse, but we couldn't today and needed you. Plus, I think it's important that all miraculous holders should keep up on training and patrol, not just Ladybug and myself. She handed him an oversized hot chocolate as his eyes widened taking it in. You do? Yeah, let me put it this way. In the nicest way, you are the understudy to Polymouth. But if the lead wasn't able to perform, you wouldn't put the understudy on the stage without them being part of the rehearsal process first, would you? Does that make sense? Cat took a large mouthful of the hot chocolate, but when he lowered the cup, he had a cream moustache across his top lip and a blob on his nose. Marinette couldn't help but double over, laughing at the sight. You have a little something there? She could barely get out. At the sight of Marinette holding her stomach in laughter, Cat's cheeks became red and his smile was wide. She tried to take a couple of deep breaths as she grabbed a handful of paper napkins, handing them over to Cat. Then she picked up her own mug, knowing what the results would be. Kitty's eyes shot open in surprise before erupting into a fit of giggles at his princess. I believe you have a little something on your face too, Minnie. He struggled to breathe, never mind talk. Who? Me? Marinette did a mock shock expression at the very thought, but lifting the mug up, took another mouthful, making it worse. The comedy sketch went back and forth for the next five minutes until Cat held his hands up in the motion of a T. Time out! It hurts too much from laughing! The words struggling to exit his mouth as he clutched onto his sides. Both of them had tears streaming down their faces from laughing so much. Thank you, Minnie. I needed that. I know what you mean, Marinette said, still trying to wipe the cream from her face. Did I get it all? She moved her face from side to side. There, one bit left. Nope, still missed it. She let out a sigh. I'll give up. I'll get a mirror. Look, I'll get it. Before she protested, Cat had leant forward, his face in front of hers to the point she could smell sugar and chocolate coming from him. He carefully wiped her cheek as his eyes caught hers. She could feel herself getting drawn to him his lips now hovering above hers. No, she couldn't. No, it can't happen. With all her strength, she pulled back. Thanks, Kitty. Did you manage to get it? Great, I, I will give my face a wash in a minute. A few minutes ago, there had been laughter, and now there was an awkwardness between them. I had better go anyway, but thank you for everything. He gave her a soft smile. Do you want me to meet you here, or... How about a meet over in Notre Dame? She pointed to the Grand Cathedral in front of a balcony. 
don't want too many superheroes coming back and forth from here. Good thinking. Well, I will see you at four tomorrow. He gave her a half wave and pulled out his baton. Night, Kitty. Cat Noir jumped back through his bathroom window and muttered, Close in. Oh, thank goodness, honey-crusted Brie, I'm home. Plaid called out as Adrian collapsed onto his bed, still riding the wave of his sugar high and spending a few hours with his princess. I still think you're playing with fire, kid. With this plan of yours? It'll be fine, Plague. We needed her today, and she was amazing. I wish you could have seen her, and I didn't think she could even get cuter until I had ten marinettes or minis. He chuckled to himself, climbing on top of me. I get that part with the battle, but asking Ladybug afterwards to take her on patrol? Don't you think your girlfriend is going to notice after a while that her boyfriend is Cat Noir if you spend more time together, jumping over rooftops? It'll be fine, Plague. I get to experience this other side of my life with her, just for a short while, and I got to see this whole different side of Marinette. She was born to be a superhero. She is a natural. I mean, the only issue is that I almost kissed her. Oh, how much I wanted to. But she stopped and pulled away. And now thinks Cat Noir has a crush on her. Well, he does, don't he? Adrian pulled out his phone and looked through a few pictures he'd got of Multimiles and then at his pictures of Marinette. I just wish I could tell her, you know, Plag. I get it, kid. And one day you will. Once it's safe. Adrian let out a little sigh and opened up his messages to Marinette. Adrian. Hey, missed you today. Sorry I had to cancel last minute. Can't wait to see you at school tomorrow. Heart. Marinette. I missed you too. And I understand. Something came up for me too at the last minute. Anyway, meet me on the steps before school? Hat. Adrian. Can't wait. Sweet dreams. He hugged his phone to his chest as he relived certain aspects of one of his best days. He knew what Plague was saying was right and it was only by chance that they needed Multimouse today. But working with her like that as Cat Noir was a dream come true. Oh, how much he wanted to tell her that her kitty was also her Adrian, her boyfriend. He wanted to tell her how proud and amazed he was of her. He wanted to tell her for the first time in that perfect moment sitting on her balcony how much he loved her. With all his heart, there was no one like Marinette. Today he got to see every part of her. He only wished she knew every part of him too. Adrian got ready for bed, excited to see his princess in the morning, whilst in the afternoon he was looking forward to running across the city with his little mini mouse. Thank you for listening to part two of A Game of Cat and Mouse. I hope you enjoyed it. Smash that like button. Comment down below what you think of it, what will happen next. And subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss out on part three and everything else that is coming your way. Okay, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.